in this video uh, we will be learning about k nearest neighbor algorithm so let's understand how this algorithm is different from another machine learning algorithm so this k nearest neighbor is a machine learning algorithm that can be you know used for both the classification and re regression okay so uh, we have learned about li linear logistic regression so they were like uh, you know can ho handle only single type of problem either regression or classification now k nearest neighbor can handle both okay so it is a versatile algorithm that can be applied to a wide range of problem okay so let's understand how it solves the problem of uh, classification so the key and uh, you know algorithm um, you know predict the target class uh, of a test instance based on the majority class of its k nearest neighbor in the training data set so for example if you have a data set of flower with different features such as petal length petal width and uh, we want to classify a new flower based on its feature so we can now use knn to find the k nearest neighbor that is so here k is the number of nearest neighbor so we will be talking about that in the uh, you know next slide also k so, so suppose k is 5 so 5 nearest neighbor it will consider okay so so we can use knn to find the k nearest neighbor of new flower in the training data set and assign the majority class of those neighbors to the new flower so the choice of k can affect the performance of the algorithm so a, uh, you know a low value of k can lead to overfitting while a high value can lead to underfitting so the distance metric you know uh, used to calculate the distance between the test instance and the training instance uh, is also important and you know can have you know significant impact on the performance of the algorithm now in terms of regression the knn algorithm predict the target value of the test instance based on the average or median value of its k nearest neighbor so for example if you want to you know uh, we let's say we have a data set of house with different features such as square footage number of bedroom and we, uh, we want to predict the price of new house based on its feature so we can use knn to find the k nearest neighbor uh, of the new house in the training data set and calculate the average or median price of those neighbors to predict the price of the new house now the thing about knn is so you know it has of knn is that uh, you know uh, it is a sim uh, its simplicity and ease of implementation uh, that is a biggest advantage and it's a non-parametric algorithm which means it can handle complex decision boundaries and non-linear relationship between input feature and target variable as well so knn is also called as lazy uh, you know lazy learning algorithm which means it can adapt the changes in the data without requiring a complete retraining of model that we will see how it does however uh, knn also have some disadvantages uh, one of the main disadvantage uh, uh, is that it's computationally expensive than uh, uh, specific, uh, you know, especially when uh, dealing with large data set or high, high dimensional feature space. So this is because the algorithm need to calculate distance between the test instance and, you know, uh, all training instance to find the nearest neighbor. So choosing the optimal value of K can also be difficult as a low value of K can lead to overfitting and high value can lead to underfitting. So KNN is also, you know, sensitive to choice of distance metrics which can high uh, which can have a significant impact on the you know performance of the algorithm finally knn uh, you know perform poorly when uh, dealing with imbalanced data as a majority class can you know dominate the prediction of new instances additionally uh, this knn cannot you know handle missing data or categorical variable directly and may require pre-processing and feature engineering to handle such data type then one more advantage of knn is that uh, it can handle multiple class problem also so in binary classification the goal is to classify instances into you know one of the two classes such as yes or no problem or true or false problem etc so in this case knn algorithm can be used to determine which of these two classes uh, you know a new instance belong to uh, based on the class level of knes neighbor so in multi class classification the goal is to class uh, you know classify instances into you know one of the several classes such as red green blue so in this case knn algorithm can be used to determine which of the you know several classes uh, are you uh, you know a new instance belong to based on the class level of knes neighbor one approach uh, you know of using knn for multi class classification is one for method that is OVA method which we have you know previously implemented also known as one versus rest so in this approach KNN is trained for each class separately treating all other classes as a single class for example if there uh, there are three classes ABC then three you know KNN classifier uh, are trained one to classify instance of A or not A one to classify instance as B or not B and one to classify instance as C or not C 
so during prediction the instance uh, is classified uh, as a class with the highest number of vote from the three KNN classifier another approach uh, to, uh, for use uh, for this type of problem is one versus one that is OVO method so in this approach KNN is trained for each pair of classes for each example so if there are three classes uh, ABC then three KNN classifier are trained one to classify instance of uh, you know A or B one to classify A or C and one to classify instance as B or C so during the prediction the instance is classified based on the you know classes with highest number of vote from the three KNN classifier so let's understand the working of KNN okay so now the KNN uh, you know that is K nearest neighbor algorithm is a type of supervised learning algorithm used for you know classification and regression task so it works by finding the K nearest uh, you know data uh, uh, data point in the training set to, to a given uh, you know input point and then uh, making a prediction based on you know the label or value of those K neighbors so mathematically um, you know the K N algorithm can be represented uh, you know given a data point of d equal to x1 y1 x2 y2 x and yn okay where xi is the feature uh, vector representing the attributes of the data point and yi is the class level or you can say the target value okay uh, and then uh, let's let's for example let's x be the you know x be the new input data point that we want to classify or predict its value so for each value you know each data point xi in d what we will be doing we will be computing its distance to the input data from point x using distance matrix such as euclidean distance manhattan distance and cosine similarity so uh, which we have in you know we have studied uh, in the previous algorithm also then what we do we sort the data point in d um, you know by their distance to x in a ascending order and then we take the k nearest neighbor to x based on the sorted distance okay so these are the few steps and for now you know the main part if if the problem statement is classification task what we will be doing let the predicted class label of x be the majority class label belong to k nearest neighbor so that is if more than half of the neighbors belong to class c1 and the remaining belongs to class c2 then x will be predicted to be for you know class one if there is a tie then simple majority vote scheme can be used to break the tie okay so for regression um, let the predicted value of x be the average of target value of k nearest neighbor and then after that what we do is uh, we return the predicted class label or you can say value of x as the output of k nearest neighbor algorithm so in summary this KNN algorithm make prediction based on the distance between two data point in the feature space and it assumes that the data point that are close together in these uh, the space are similar or related and that uh, they are likely to belong to same class okay or you know um, have similar target value that uh, uh, I mean uh, that are very you know uh, is uh, I mean same class they are belong to same class so the k parameter control the size of neighborhood okay used to make prediction and should be chosen carefully based on the nature of the problem and the size of the data set so hope this thing is clear now let's understand uh, you know uh, mathematics behind it so you will be given a uh, training data set with n instances and their corresponding class label okay which means label will be there okay and it test instances x and the you know the working will be like this so here i have elaborated you know uh, more in detail but here is the shortest form so so in short what happens is we calculate the distance between test instance so you have test data and a train data and you uh, calculate the distance between test instance x and all n instance in training data set using the choose and distance metric so you can choose any of the distance metrics so by default is euclidean distance okay uh, which will be uh, we will be using and you know the formula will be d of x comma x i okay and the formula will be a square root square root of you know some double parenthesis then xj minus xij whole square okay I'm sorry for this I mean I do not have marker okay so this is what the formula is where uh, our 
uh, you know xj and xij are the jth feature of test instances x and the ith instance in the training data set respectively okay and you will feed the data into here okay so then after that we select the k okay we select the k nearest neighbor of the test instances x based on their distance where k is the predefined parameter and the neighbor can be selected based on either the smallest distance or the largest similarity score which will be depending on the distance metric that we have used for classification task uh, you know for classification task and for regression task uh, i mean there is two different uh, aspect we should know and i have already talked about it so for classification task what we do we assign the class label of the test instances x based on majority class so majority means if five are voting that it is a which means five so suppose you have taken k equal to five okay k equal to five which means five neighbors so there is a data point okay this data point and uh, you know three of them saying that uh, the class is a okay three of them are saying class is a and two of them uh, are, are saying uh, it is class b so majority vote means uh, whichever has the highest number of neighbors saying the same class that will be taken as that class for that particular data point so, okay so for this data point a class will be labeled okay so this is what means so majority class among the k nearest neighbors so there is five neighbors and we can see that the three of them saying a so all five will be you know um, uh, i mean all three are voting to be class a but remaining two are saying class b for that data point it will be marked as class a then again we will check another data point and another saying that you know uh, a a a i mean uh, two of the neighbors saying a okay and three of the neighbors saying b for the another you know row okay so for that uh, you know the class label will be b again you will check for next row then you have found that again we have three votes and a has two votes for that row also the label will be b and this is how it works okay so and for regression task what we do we assign target value uh, of the test instance x to be average or medium value among the k nearest neighbor so now uh, for classification task we were taking you know uh, majority vote and now here we will be taking mean okay mean of all those data point and then we return the predicted class level or the target value of x so mathematically k and n can be formulated as the function of fx okay that map the test instances x to its predicted class level or target value and the function can be represented as you know argmax uh, 1 less than j less than m sum of y i equal to j i equal to i up till k so where m is the number of uh, classes y i is the class level and i <coughs> and the ith neighbors okay so for regression task again 1 by k into sum of y i i equal to 1 to up till k okay so y i is the target value uh, uh, of the ith neighbor so the choice of distance metric uh, and the value of k can be adjusted based on the specific problem at hand and the KNN algorithm is a non-parametric method, meaning that it does not make any assumption about the underlying distribution of the data. And it is also a lazy learning algorithm, meaning that it does not perform any training on the data uh, and instead memorize the training data set to make the prediction at a time. So there is no, there is nothing called training phase in this algorithm. It just memorize every data point and you know make prediction based on uh, what what was there in the training data set. Now let uh, let's understand what all distance metric we have in this uh, KNN. Okay, since whatever we have learned for K means uh, here we have in KNN also. So there are several distance metric that we uh, you know that can be used to calculate the distance between two data point in KNN. And some of the most common distance metrics are Euclidean distance, and this is the most widely used distance metric in KNN. Uh, it calculates the straight line between two data point in the feature space, and the uh, you know the Euclidean distance between two data point x and y uh, is you know given the formula, uh, which is you know the square root of x1 y1 whole square plus uh, you know x2 uh, minus y2 whole square then we have manhattan distance also known as l1 distance and this metric calculates the distance between two point by summing the absolute dis uh, you know differences between their corresponding feature value so the manhattan between two data point x and y given by the formula that is you know absolute x uh, x1 uh, minus y1 plus x2 minus y2 up till x and yn then we have um, 
chebby shape distance and it is also known as l infinity distance so this matrix calculates the distance between two points by taking the maximum you know absolute difference between their corresponding feature value so this distance between two uh, you know point x and y given by the formula max of you know uh, manhattan distance okay then we have cosine similarity so again this cosine similarity metric calculates the cosine of the angle between two data point in the feature space and it is often used for you know text classification and other application where the magnitude of feature vector is not important so the co cosine similarity between two data point x and y is you know given by the formula that is x into y but divided by absolute x into absolute y so hope that is uh, this is clear so where x and y is a uh, uh, dot product of x and y and absolute x and absolute uh, y are the magnitude of x and y respectively so there are many other distance metrics that can be used in knn and the choice of distance metric can have significant impact on the performance of the algorithm so it is important to choose a distance metric that that is appropriate for data and problem at hand now let's understand how to choose number of k that is number of neighbors so the value of k in knn algorithm it is important hyperparameter that determines the number of neighbors to consider uh, when making prediction so the choice of k can have a significant impact on the performance of the algorithm okay and the selection of k uh, uh, you know this hyperparameter in knn algorithm plays a crucial role in determining the number of neighbors to understand uh, you know uh, uh, neighbor to consider when making prediction um, I mean it plays a crucial role okay so the optimal k value can significantly affect the performance of algorithm so there are various techniques to determine the value of k and uh, here are some you know uh, common method to choose the value of k so first is trial and error so one of the simplest way to choose the value of k is through trial and error so the performance of algorithm can be evaluated for different value of k and the one with the best performance can be selected then we have cross validation so another method is to you know use cross validation to estimate the performance of algorithm for different value of k so in this method the data set is split into training and validation set and the algorithm is trained and evaluated for different value of k so the value of k that gives the best performance on the validation set is selected then we, then we have you know rule of thumb so what happens in rule of thumb is a common used uh, rule of method is uh, set k uh, to the square root of number of instance in the training data set so the rule assumes that the data set is large enough and provide good balance between bias and variance then other method will be you know domain knowledge so in some cases domain knowledge can give you know or you know help in choosing the value of k so for example in Im image recognition task neighboring pixel are more likely to be correlated and the hence a smaller value of k may be more appropriate and in some cases domain knowledge can assist in determining the value of k for example in image recognition task uh, you know like i just told you uh, I mean, neighboring pixel, uh, you know, are typically correlated, but uh, you just have to, you know, be sure that uh, whatever, uh, you know, domain knowledge that you are determining for not just image recognition task, but other tasks also. Like, for example, there is a, bak you know, basket of fruits and uh, and it doesn't need to be, you know, all, uh, all the fruit in the basket are same fruit. It can be different also, right? So choosing choosing uh, for that case choosing a uh, number of nearest neighbor can be harmful right so for that case you can choose higher number of k to determine you know what is a best possible solution for this particular problem so the choice of k depend on again specific problem and data set and then and then there is no one size fit all solution so it is important to evaluate the performance of algorithm for different value of k and choose the one with uh, you know that give the best performance on the validation set or the test set now let's understand an example mathematics example using us uh, you know knn algorithm okay so this is the very uh, you know s simplest uh, you know algorithm in the uh, you know whole machine learning because you have a data point and you will just have to feed the data point into the formula okay so let's understand what's happening here so the very first thing so you have the data set and you have three features and one target and three rows okay so the very first thing that you will be doing is the choose the value of k so first we need to choose the value of k which represents the number of years neighbor we you know want to consider let's say we have chosen k equal to 2 then after that uh, we calculate the distance between the test instance and each of the training instance suppose we want to predict the target value for the test instance with the following feature okay feature 1 feature 2 feature 3 now 
uh, we now uh, we have chosen the k nearest neighbor for test distance based on the distance we want to calculate since we choose k equal to 2 we need to select two nearest neighbor features okay or, or you can say two nearest neighbor so in this case the nearest neighbor are row 1 and 3 okay let's say row 1 and row 3 so the distance between uh, them will be cal we will uh, feed the formula uh, the euclidean distance formula and we will get uh, the value to be 1.732 and then for the third row it is again 1.732 so we so finally we make the predi uh, you know prediction for the target value of the test instance based on the target value of k nearest neighbor so since the target uh, of the nearest neighbor are a and b respectively we can use the majority vote scheme to predict that the target value for the uh, test instance is b and that is what how it calculates in uh, you know in the actual algorithm okay so this is a basic idea of knn algorithm and we repeat this process for each test instance in the data set to make the prediction for all of them so hope you guys understood how knn algorithm works we have understood all the distance metrics we have understood you know how to choose particular k now let's understand uh, how to do all this in coding okay so challenges that k nearest neighbor algorithm faces so the very first thing is lazy learning approach so, so the KNN algorithm is an example of lazy learning algorithm and in lazy learning there is no explicit training phase uh, where a model learns from the data. So instead the algorithm stores the entire training data set and use it to make prediction for new instances. So at runtime, this makes lazy le uh, learning algorithm computationally expensive when making prediction but allow for more flexible and adapt you know, adaptable model that can learn from new data in the real time. So advantage as well as disadvantage. So then, then after that, what next challenge is non-parametric uh, learning algorithm. So uh, KNN is again a non-parametric learning algorithm, and this means that the model does not assume any specific functional form or parameter for the relationship between input feature and the output target variable. Instead, the algorithm learns the decision boundaries or regression function directly from the data uh, based on the nearest neighbor of each test instances. Then we have weighted voting. So in classification tasks uh, with imbalance class distribution, the majority class can dominate the prediction made by KNN. So to address this issue, a simple solution is to uh, is to you know implement weighted voting, where each neighbor's you know vote uh, is weighted by its distance to the test instance. So this way, the closer neighbor have the higher influence on the prediction than the further one. So regardless of their class level, so this can help improve the accuracy of the algorithm on imbalanced data set. Then we have changing the distance metric. Okay, so the choice of distance metric can have significant impact on the performance of KNN. So, for instance, in classification task, the Hamming distance, uh, which measures the number of different character between two string or equal, uh, you know, of equal length, may be more appropriate than the Euclidean distance, which assume continuous variables. So, choosing right distance metric can help make the KNN algorithm more meaning, uh, meaningful and relevant to specific problem at hand. Then we have dimension, dimensionality reduction techniques. So, uh, so there is a problem. Okay, so KNN can suffer from curse of dimensionality. So, let's understand uh, more thoroughly on the next slide. So, KNN can suffer from curse of dimensionality, where the distance between any two point is a, any high dimensional space become almost the same making it difficult to identify nearest neighbor accurately so dimensionality reduction technique like principal component analysis algorithm can help reduce the number of features while preserving most of the variance in the data so this can help make the distance metric more meaningful and reduce the computation complexity of the algorithm however uh, you know care should be uh, taken when applying dimensionality reduction as it uh, you know uh, can also lead to loss of information or introduce bias in the data set so let's understand what all advantages actually is for knn and disadvantage so advantages are knn is again simple and easy to understand algorithm that can be implemented with just few line of code knn is non parametric algorithm which means it can handle complex decision boundaries and non linear relationship between input feature and target variable KNN is a uh, lazy learning algorithm which means it can adapt the changes in the data without requiring a complete retraining of the model. KNN is a versatile uh, you know, algorithm that can be used for both classification and regression tasks. Then KNN is you know, robust to noisy data uh, which means that it can handle outlier as well as it considers the closest neighbor, uh, you know, neighbor rather than the entire data set. Now what is disadvantages? 
So KNN can be computationally expensive, especially when dealing with large dataset or high dimensional feature space. This is because algorithm need to calculate the distance between test instances and uh, all training instances to find the nearest neighbor. So choosing the optimal value of K can be difficult as a low value of K can lead to overfitting and a high value can lead to underfitting. KNN is uh, you know sensitive to uh, choice of distance metric which can have a significant impact on the performance of the model. Okay, so th also KNN performs poorly when dealing with imbalanced data set as the majority class you know can dominate the prediction of new instances. KNN uh, cannot handle missing data or categorical data uh, directly and may require pre-processing and feature engineering to handle such data types. Now let's understand all the application that KNN is popular for. So KNN algorithm has various and uh, several application in the various field. So one of the example is image recognition. So KNN can be used for image recognition task. For example, in Im image recognition, KNN can be used to identify the you know closest match to a given face in the database of known face. Then we have test classification. So in test classification, KNN can be used for uh, you know uh, sentiment analysis spam filtering topic modeling so in this case knn can be used to classify a document based on its similarity or other document in the training set then we have recommender system so recommender system is like a you know uh, identify similar item or user so for example in movie recommendation knn can be used to recommend movie to a user based on the rating of similar users then we have bioinformatics so in bioinformatics knn can be used you know used as applications such as gene expression analysis protein classification so in this case knn can be used to classify gene or protein based on uh, their similarity to other gene or protein then we have financial analysis so in financial analysis knn can be used in you know predicting stock price identify tre trends and detect anomalies so in this case knn can be used to classify stock based on similarity uh, to other stock in training set then we have agriculture so knn can be used in the agriculture to predict crop yield detect disease outbreak and identify optimal planting conditions so in this case um, the knn can be used to classify a crop based on its similarity to other crop in the training set then we have healthcare so so knn can be used in healthcare for disease diagnosis uh, drug discovery patent monitoring okay so in this case knn can be used to classify a patient based on the similarity to other patient in the training set so overall knn is a versatile algorithm that can be applied to various fields that require pattern recognition classification and prediction okay so hope you guys understood the applications and where it can be used now understand curse of dimensionality so this curse of dimensionality is a term used to describe the challenges that arise when working with high dimensional data so in a phenomena where the performance of many machine learning algorithm include knn degrades as the number of dimension in the data increase so in high dimensional data the number of possible feature combination increases exponentially uh, with the number of dimension so making uh, making it difficult to identify a relevant feature and find meaningful pattern in the data so as a result it become harder to accurately classify or predict new data point another issue with high dimensional data is that the data become more sparse as the number of dimension increases which means that the distance between any two point in the data set increases making it harder to identify similar point and the cluster uh, and to cluster them together so this can lead to overfitting of the model where the model fit the training data very well but fail to generalize to new unseen data furthermore as the number of dimension increases the amount of data required to train a model effectively also increases exponentially so this can lead to problem of overfitting so where the model become too complex and fit the training data too well leading to poor performance on new data so to migrate the curse of dimensionality various technique has been developed uh, including dimensionality reduction feature selection and regularization so these technique aim to reduce the number of dimensions in the data set or to identify the most relevant feature allow, allowing for you know more accurate and efficient modeling in summary, this curse of dimensionality uh, is significant challenge uh, when working with high dimensional data and it is important to use appropriate technique to migrate its effects and develop accurate, you know, efficient model. And then there is a few more points that I want to add here. So the curse of dimensionality occurs when, <coughs> sorry, when the, fe when the feature or the dimension are very high. So in, in, in the case of KNN algorithm, it can suffer from curse of dimensionality which refer to the degradation in the performance of the algorithm 
as the dimensionality of the data increases. So the main issue in high dimensional data is that number of possible feature combination grow exponentially with the number of dimensions. So making it difficult to identify relevant feature and meaningful, uh, meaningful pattern in the data. So as a result, KNN algorithm can become you know less effective as the number of dimension increases and uh, as a distance between the point you know uh, become less meaningful uh, you know the data set become more sparse furthermore as the dimension increases the number of neighbor required uh, to get a good estimate of true underlying density of the data increases exponentially so this means that the algorithm may need to be considered for very large number of neighbors which can be computationally expensive and time consuming the other way to migrate this curse of dimensionality problem in the KNN algorithm uh, to use dimensionality reduction uh, algorithms like PCA SVD that is sing, uh, singular value decomposition to reduce the number of dimension in the data while preserving the most important informations. Another approach to use feature selection technique to identify most relevant feature and discard irrelevant or redundant features. So lastly the curse of dimensionality can affect the model performance of KNN algorithm in high dimensional data and it is important to use appropriate technique like dimensionality reduction or feature selection to migrate this issue. So hope you guys understand what are the challenges that KN and Algorithm faces. Now let's uh, let's see you in the next video. Thank you for joining guys.